was uh, it, it was interesting, right? We started seeing uh, a change in a lot more of cartel control on the southern, on the south, uh, uh-huh. on the Mexican side. So that kind of started pushing some of the influence of where they were going to come through, and then. You know, we we noticed that the price to cross started increasing in the late 90s, early 2000s. And I think that adds to the aggressiveness because they're dealing with, you know, bad actors, right? The cartel is, is, is you know, you want to cross through here, you're going to have to pay. Right. Uh, so now there's a, yeah, there's a different energy coming yes. over. It's not just a guy coming over to pick peaches right. or to be a part of um like kind of sharecropping, I guess, type yep. of vibes. Uh, it's somebody who's paid a cartel. Can you expound a little bit more on that? Like the cartels start to, uh, they start to recognize there's a business in letting people cross through the land on the Mexican side. Yes, yeah, so, is that is that what you're talking so, about? Yeah. So so people were were still coming to look for work, right? Mm-hmm. And still going to do some of that, you know, field work. But now they had to pay somebody to cross. Ah. So now they're like, hey, I, I don't want to lose the, the the thousand bucks I paid to come through this area. Now I'm going to be a run. So I think that kind of increased some of the aggressiveness because look, they, you know, or they may have been threatened. And so now it's like, hey, that, that, the I just paid to come through here. Now, I, now Border Patrol is about to arrest me. I'm running or I'm fighting because if I have to go back, then I'm going to have to pay again. We started seeing that dynamic. And I think that may have been, uh, aside from just youth in general across the world, yeah. we're getting a little more, you know, you had more TV, you had more shows, you know, we had still hadn't had the onset of internet and things like that yet. But I think that was the the shift. And then, you know, obviously and, we can talk about the cartel because that is, that, but, that is a big business. Yeah. But just to interject, so that was because the, when you say that people were having to pay to come, they were having to pay a cartel. Yes. Yeah. There is a plaza boss in every area along the border, right? It's run by the, the, the bigger cartels. So, you know, if you want to cross near Palomas, Mexico, which was near my area, um, you're going to have to pay a plaza boss. So if you're going to come through here, you you don't want to have to go back because you're going to pay again. Now you got skin yeah, in the game. Yeah, or or even worse, if you didn't pay and you snuck in around the plaza boss and you get returned back, the plaza boss is going to say, "Hey, wait a second, I don't remember you paying me." Yeah, and that could that could cost them their lives because you know the cartel is pretty ruthless. You know, the, the cartel, and I'll use the cartel and smuggling organization interchangeable. I mean, cartel is the hierarchy; they're the ones, the big boss, and each one of them have they're commodity neutral. Whether it's people uh, or things, they're going to smuggle it, and pay for it, whatever. Okay, and they own they own kind of plaza space yeah. along the. What'd you call it? Or I, the plaza boss was somebody that owned like the area. Near the crossings where right. people are going to cross, and they may not own the land, but they they're the mafia there. Yeah, that's basically it. Right? Okay, difference is is you know uh, it, it's the cartel really has got huge influence over the uh, so much, but to to those bullets, right, it's a real mafia, not yeah, like our mafia. Who's well, like yeah, a couple. So guys, I used to yeah. kind of compare the two, but you know, um, you the 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 mafia back in the day here in the United States, you know, you wouldn't need. A, a, a military to take it out <laughs> where right. the, the cartel is, is well, well armed and well financed to handle things. And, you know, a police officers are not going to go take out the cartel. Right. Right. Um, but those, those three bullets uh, in, in kind of paraphrasing that is number one, the, the rhetoric that goes on in our political and media sphere in the United States. When you say rhetoric, what do you mean? Oh, they're asylum seekers. We need to do this. We need to, you know, uh, you know, the false choices of you either for border security or you're anti-immigrant or you're, 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 you're for immigration. That means you're an open border person. No. So the bad guys are listening to all this, right? right. So so they hear this. Oh, asylum seeker. Okay. This is going to be our marketing point. I'm going to charge you whatever I charge you. I'll give you and, the information. I'll this, tell you how with it, things yes. to answer and say. And then you clog the system up. And since there's no room at the end, in other words, there's no place to detain them once we've caught them, they get released. And that's what they want because they're going to, they're, they're in the United States, they are going to find work. Generally, it's going to be below board. That other, that third bullet is the one that should concern every one of us. If we're really going to make this a humanitarian issue, which it really is, is the human traffickers. 